Now, look, I'm going to be the first to admit that four months ago, I was a beginner in Airtable as well. And as I watched all of these Airtable for beginner videos, I realized that nobody was really explaining it in the way that I wanted it. And I wanted to know about how I can I use this as a content creator. I don't really care about invoicing and all of these other different ways that people were showing how to use Airtable. So what I actually did was I hired people to give me the basics for my specific use cases. So instead of you going out there and paying hundreds of dollars to get personalized information, I thought I'd share everything that I've learned over the last four months. And spoiler alert, if you look at this particular platform here, I've actually built some pretty amazing and in-depth tables that have fully automated so much of my content creation workflow. I've been able to make my team two to three times more productive in the last four months. And I've taken my time in my business, my pet care business down from working five days a week to working one day a week because I did most of the marketing. So all of that has been completely mind blowing for me. And that's why I've been shouting from the rooftops in all of these videos about how you can do that too. So let's dive into Airtable for beginners now. So once you sign up, you can choose which particular plan you want to go with. And I've built some pretty incredible automations and workflows and tables in my business on the free plan. We're still not paying for it. So it's pretty incredible how much you can get away with for free. But once you log in, then you'll get, get to a page that looks like this. And over on the left here are what Airtable call workspaces. Now you can think of workspaces as like your command center. It's your hub. It's where you start to organize your entire business. Now, this is going to look different for everybody. You could split it into departments. So maybe you have a workspace for your marketing team, another for your sales team, another for your product team and so forth. Or if you're an agency, then potentially you have different workspaces for different clients, or there could be a whole host of other ways that you set it up. The way that this is my second account, but the way that I was setting up initially, which was based on different workflows. Now I wouldn't specifically do that for my, in my other account, what the way that we're doing it is we're splitting it up for basically different teams. So we'll have a workspace for our marketing team. We'll have a workspace for our product creation team, another workspace that then manages clients. And that's kind of how we have split it up. Workspaces also then allow you to share it much more easy with collaborators. So in this demo workspace here, if I wanted to share this with contractors or clients or even other members on my team, then I have the option up here to share. And there's a bunch of different share parameters within here as well. So whether they're a creator, editor, commenter, read only, maybe you want to transfer the ownership to them, then you can do all of that inside there. You can also create a link. So that if you want to make it publicly available, then people can access it from the public as well. Once you're inside your workspace, this is where we now move on to the next part, which is called an Airtable base. The best way to think about bases is that it's a, it's a, like a standalone database. It's where you get to manage all of the content and stuff within that base. So for example, I've got a podcast demo here, which I'm going to click into. And inside here, when you first look at it, you kind of think it looks like Google Sheet. However, instead of being able to do, you know, you can in a Google Sheet, you can work crossways, downways, so many different ways. The best way to distinguish a base is that it's more of a database. So it's things for storing certain types of data, whether that's text, dates. We've got more advanced stuff like formulas and buttons and so forth that we trigger webhooks from. So it's just a slightly different way to think about it compared to a Google Sheet. I find that I still use Google Sheets in some instances, but not all of the time now. So an example of when I would use a Google Sheet is we have a full content creation workflow for our online workshops so it creates all of the email copy, all of the website copy, all of the ad copy, all across in this one particular workflow. But what is hard to store in there is, you know, things like if we want to check which pages we're using on the website. So more of like your, your storage for your, your URLs and different things like that. Now, the thing with Airtable and the bases is that you can do so many more things than if you were to just use a Google sheet, for example. So if I go add field. There are many different options here, like single line text, long text. You can add attachments, check boxes, multiple select. So you can have multiple tags or multiple categories, and you can select multiple or a single select where you have those tags and categories and you select one. You can add your user so that whether that's you or somebody in the team, so that if something happens, then a particular user gets notified. You've got your date, phone number, email, number, currency, percent, duration, rating, formula, and then more advanced things like roll up and lookups. You've got your count, created time, last modified time, created by, 
auto number, barcode, and a button as well. So I'm not going to run through all of those because there's so many different scenarios of when we would use them, when we wouldn't use them, and so forth. I'm going to keep to some of the main ones that we do particularly use when it comes to content creation and also order for our content creation as well. So these particular columns here that I'm talking about are what we would call fields in a spreadsheet. You might call them a column. In here, we call them the field. And these are all the, the, the different things that we can add into each of those fields. Now, the one big reason why I love Airtable is because of the next feature, which is called linking records. So what we could have here is like, this is basically our workflow, right? So let's name this table as workflow one. And we could have our entire workflow in here that then feeds off into certain automations in like make.com, for example. And I have full playlist in my description where I talk about the more advanced workflows that I have built using make.com and Airtable. But we can store, let's say we, we're going to use make.com to connect into an API of like ChatGPT, for example then we might want to create a different table called prompts. So in here, we would have like our prompts name, and then we would call this our prompt. And I'm just going to delete these other two so we don't get confused. And let's say that I'm just going to call this is my prompt number one. And we want to use in our workflows, these prompts at different times. So rather than having to come into our workflows and add that prompt manually every single time, what we can do is we can go link to another record when we're adding in a field here, and we can link into that prompt field. So what that's going to allow us to do, if I click create and let's, we can, we can add a lookup field. So lookup field is then, so we're linking to the prompts base, and then we're going to look up all of the different fields within that base so that we can reference it in this particular, this first base that we're adding it to. So what that has done now is that has allowed, giving us a little uh, plus button here or an add button where it will show, and let's give that, that prompt a name. So prompts one, it will show these prompts now by a drop down menu. And we can add that prompt into our workflow. It's going to show the name of the prompt and then it's going to show the full prompt there. So that's how we can now start to build out these more advanced content creation workflows. So for example, I've got this YouTube workflow here where we paste in a transcript to create all the YouTube assets like titles, timestamps, descriptions, and so forth. And if I go along further, we can then take that transcript from YouTube and then turn that into as many social media posts as we want. So for example, we've got this linked to our social media template library where I have 85 different library uh, templates and I can add those templates into the Airtable base and we can create as many different social media posts as we, we want on autopilot. So I'm just going to add three in and then I'll open it up and show you what I mean. So I've just added three different templates in. So uh, this one, which is going from current situation to desired outcome. So what we can do in our content workflows is reference our transcript, ask the AI to, com to use that transcript to complete the template that you see there, and it will do that. Then we do the same for, you know, this one. If I had never started X topic, I wouldn't have got X outcome, outcome one, two, and three, and four, and so forth. Also, another template like this. So it's like how to do this thing the old way, which is it talks about all the old ways I used to do it. And then it provides the, the new ways. So, so I hope you can begin to see how we can actually do some more of these advanced particular scenarios to really accelerate what we are creating. Now, as I was adding the prompts here in the linked record, I did quickly reference the lookup tables, which is now that's what I want to talk about, which is lookups and rollups. So lookups is simply finding that source that we added, that linked record. So it's finding this and it is then finding or looking up a field within that particular base. So like I said, this one is looking up the name field and then this one is looking up the prompt field. And that's basically what lookups mean and how you would use them. Now there's a similar one and that's called a rollup and a rollup does the same thing. However, it gives us an extra capability, which is we can then take that data and then do something on top of it first by adding a formula before it actually feel, feeds it into, into the base or into the field within that table. So for example, we could do array unique values. We could do things like concatenate, which is going to join it all together and uh, split it off that way. And if I come back into this YouTube workflow to reference the social media, uh, joining of the social media again, that's basically what we've done here. 
So in this package template field that we have here, we've created a roll up, which is it's grabbing the social post templates that we want. And then we're concatenating those fields, which means it's going to join them together, separated by a comma so that it can run through each of those temp on autopilot. And then we have our make.com automation set up so that it reads the different values or the different concatenated one at a time. So that would just be one way that we could do that. Now, a simple way to think about this would be let's add in prompt two and let's do a roll up so we can have an example of what that might look like. So we'll go roll up and we'll choose the prompt. And then let's see what it looks like when we say array unique. So if we open up that now and just go expand that record, we've got our roll up here, which is saying, oh, we need to add in our second record. So it's splitting it up by array unique. Or if we change that to concatenate values, then it's going to put that onto different lines. The other interesting things to do here are, you know, things like formulas. So let's turn this one into a formula instead of a text. So we'll go formula and we'll go, we want to call this speaker name, guest name. So speaker name, and it's going to reference that column. And then we can just go and and we'll call it, so the speaker name interviews the guest name is what we're going to call this particular episode ID. So we're, the end is basically like a space and the guest name, we just need to type that, put in that field there, and it will create a formula for the ID of this particular field or this particular column. So Laura McKinley interviews Jaron Lucas, for example. So there's, there's so many different things that I could dive into and that would be more advanced. Another one that I can quickly touch on here is, is triggers. So we can use button to trigger things. So what we actually do for our, so what we actually do inside Airtable is we trigger webhooks to activate our make.com automations. And basically we're using formulas, which is the concatenate formula, which basically means joining certain pieces of information together which is it's joining the webhook URL that is provided to us in make.com with the record ID provided to us by Airtable. And the record ID is simply this line across here, this record, so that it will pull in all of the information that we have in all of these fields across the top here. So when I hit that button, it's going to send into make.com the speaker name, the guest name, the transcripts, the title, and all of these other fields so that we can use them inside our automation so that we can create content so much faster than ever before. So I hope I didn't lose you in all of that. That is how I'm using it to create content. And if you do have any specific questions around Airtable and how we're actually using it in a more advanced way, then watch this next video here where I dive into a two and a half hour tutorial on how I built a full AI content generation workflow. See you there.